delighted to be here and talk about one of my favorite subjects, that is transportation. Uh, I have, as they say in the labor movement, seniority in the matter, having started on transit with uh, when I went to work in 1945 for Mayor O'Dwyer, who had just been elected at the time. It was during that period that the five-cent fare, which had been in force since subways opened, the first IRT subway in 1904, and uh, the five cent fare was something that was part of popular culture and the thought of changing it was very concerned, broad concern on the part of politicians and the control was in the hands of the Board of Estimate which had officials that uh, were all, all had to stand for election and if you said you were against the five cent fare, you were in trouble. The, um, over the years, I have come, and I'll explain why, to believe that free transit is a very important concept to deal with the serious problem we have, not only in New York City, but throughout the world. The automobile is very popular. It gives people flexibility. On the other hand, there's just so much room for automobiles, and congestion is one of the most serious problems that countries, particularly cities, and the larger the city, the more serious the problem faces. And I was surprised that it did not get mentioned during the very interesting debates between Hillary and Obama. The um, thing about mass transit, about um, free transit, which used to draw a laugh when I mentioned it, as if it's something that would be great if you didn't have to pay. If you don't have to pay, that's very attractive. The um, until you analyze why and what I think was wrong, and I don't say this in a critical way, with the mayor's plan for congestion pricing. Not that it shouldn't take place, but the promotion I thought was in the wrong order. I thought we should start out with free transit. First of all, that would attract people who wouldn't have to pay. And there are more of those who use the subways than there are people who drive automobiles. And I do think and I do hope that the question of free transit and its relationship, as I'll explain in a few minutes, to uh, automobile traffic should become a principal subject of debate throughout the city during the 2009 mayoral election. Free transit by itself would reduce congestion according to this book we have and the study that was done and the, on the spreadsheet that shows the interrelationship between automobile transit and mass transit. And the basic factor that people overlook is that they are interrelated. If you go by automobile, you're not going by mass transit. If you go by mass transit, you're not going by automobile. And you go the same purpose with either system to get to where you want to go. So um, if you start out by saying transit should be free, according to our study, that by itself would be a 15% reduction in, in congestion. 
people would switch from the automobile to free transit. It would also incidentally amount to about a, a, a thousand dollars a year for the people who use mass transit without having to pay taxes on it and they would be able to uh, they would spend the money in the city and that in itself would be a benefit but the um, the basic situation is that getting around the city whether by transit or by automobile or all of the other ways which are small by comparison walking roller skating and so forth bicycling and they're very good but the two principal ways are automobiles and and um, mass transit and they are interrelated if you go by subway you're not going by automobile it's just simple as that and the um, thing that occurs to me is that instead of starting out by saying let's have congestion pricing and I was very much in favor of the mayor's plan because you start out with a proposal that a lot of people are, will be against you say would you rather um, pay more or less you're going to opt to pay less so if you start out with congestion pricing you're starting out with something which uh, what's his name richard bratsky who represents people in westchester who come into the city by automobile and he's violently against congestion pricing because his is the people he represents don't want to pay it. See, but the if you start out with free transit, you start out with something that the people who use mass transit uh, would uh, welcome. If you have a choice, would you rather pay or not pay? You're going to opt for not paying. And, but then, it, as I said, that produces a 15% reduction in congestion. But the next question comes, where are you going to get the money for mass transit to, be, to make it free? So Richard Brodsky and I, I didn't exactly debate this with him, but we had a contentious discussion, it says tax the rich and th that would do it but it wouldn't exactly please the rich to have it so they would be against it he also said the real estate people would benefit from this so maybe they should pay for it but actually the people who drive automobiles will be the best beneficiary because roughly speaking, because of the 15% reduction in, in congestion that would come from free transit, if you add also congestion pricing, which by itself produces a 6% drop in congestion, so you'd get more than a 15% improvement, the people who will benefit by it are the people who drive automobiles. If it takes you an hour to get from where you start to where you want to go because of the congestion, with this it would take you a half hour. These are general figures. I'm not giving you precise ones. So that um, what I am saying is the approach that we should have is one, they're all interrelated and have to be considered together. Number two, we should start out with free transit because of uh, the good it will do. And thirdly, we should then consider congestion pricing as a way of paying for free transit. Thank you.